All the Colors of Darkness is the debut full length from Brisbane, Australia, doom metal trio Rocky's Pride and Joy. And uh, we could consider their sound influenced by uh, psychedelic uh, sludge doom, uh, everything from uh, Electric Wizard and that sort of stable of doom, as well as more modern groups like Windhand, who took that sound and made it more palatable with some uh, alternative rock structures and things like that. It's definitely in that uh, spaced out and creeped out realm of doom, but also there's a little bit more to it, as we'll discover here. So this uh, this band, uh, in instead of showing up with a demo or a half-baked uh, sort of concoction up front they started releasing singles of the early songs they'd worked on to kind of get the the uh, the digital presence out there before they started playing shows i think it's the right way to do it these days because we got a sense of the band was uh moving quickly in their evolution but they didn't uh, rush to an album right away so we get a very different sound a more sabbath-esque kind of throwback um kind of a cult rock influenced feeling on their early singles and then something with a bit more of a different sabbath groove later on as they progressed quickly so um some of these songs are uh, were written a couple of years ago you can kind of tell they're slightly more primitive in the way they uh develop their melodies and their riffs are quite simple in their construction and movement and uh we'll get to something that feels like more maybe more of a recent song they'd written uh here in a clip So I think what drew me into this record, it was the sound of it right away. It's very well produced. It's quite loud and fuzzed out. It is that kind of doom. And I know that Win Hand is kind of an easy way to go just because a lot of people know the band. But if you're a fan of the Wounded Kings and they're a little slightly more dire and eerie feeling uh, past like 2011 or so, um, it's not quite, like I say here, it's not quite as heavy as like early Monolord, but it's sort of in that realm of looking past past uh, what Electric Wizard did right in sort of their mid-period and uh, finding a more psychedelic Doom-influenced way to go with it. Uh, otherwise, I think that the record's theme is sort of, uh, you know, haunted places and things like that. It's kind of interesting. I think that uh, it's a unique sort of personality to attach to a record, um, which feels like it was a cool idea they had and they developed into this very professional, well-made record. And I think they do well to um, both uh, approach the status quo and do it better than most, but also uh, start to put their own touch on things, uh, even though they're, they kind of keep it a little bit sedate, um, a little bit weird. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't quite go over the top, but it is a unique uh, outcome overall. So, uh, not i don't have again i don't i don't usually have a lot of deep thoughts on this type of a record it's sort of a sit back and enjoy it kind of thing i think the sound of this record is great and uh, i was able to get into it and enjoy the the, the creepy kind of uh, morbid stories they were telling on the album so uh, it's, a, it's a high recommendation for me I, it's a little bit surprisingly high because I don't know how much further they could really go with it from here, and I like that about a debut. I think that it feels very complete as a thought and as a construction. It doesn't feel like there's too many loose ends that they haven't tied up, and I like that feeling with a debut, so I was impressed by that. Uh, so give that a chance. Uh, it comes out tomorrow, and uh, read my review if you'd like more of my thoughts. <laughs> 